Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today I've got something a little different and fun for you. Uh, so we're in the month of May. We've been doing a lot. I've got a lot of tutorials on shirt making because I'm one of the leaders for Sew My Style, which I've said about a hundred million times. Um, but yes, we've had a lot of shirt making going on and then also I'm finishing up in Me Made May. I've been wearing um, my first two modules. I've started more of a module approach to capsule sewing. Anyway, model, I've been wearing just nothing but module one and two, which is actually a piece that I'm wearing at the moment, my Sedona shirt. Um, so, <laughs> I decided to throw in something a little different. My swimsuit drawer, this is a two-fold thing. So, first of all, my swimsuit drawer um, is in desperate need of a rehaul. Um, I've said it before, but I've lost a lot of weight since last year just because I had a whole bunch of food allergies diagnosed and my boobs and butt have deflated. <laughs> so um, that is obviously a pretty detrimental when it comes to swimsuits because those need to fit those areas pretty good or else you're going to have some serious wardrobe malfunctions in the water. Um, anyway, so I'm going to make myself some swimsuits and I thought, um, so I had planned on doing that and I actually have some fabric here that I had purchased and we'll talk about that in a second. But I've also had a lot of requests for more um, fabric, how to buy fabric online type of videos, um, which I thought might be kind of fun over the summer just to kind of sprinkle in a few different types of fabrics as we go along. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about swimsuit fabrics and how to shop for swimwear fabrics online, which actually is much easier than you might think. Um, so I'm going to talk about that and also about some of the notions you're going to need. I'm also going to talk about, um, I'm going to make different patterns for all of these. I think. That's the plan. <laughs> I'm trying out a couple of new patterns, so that will depend on um, how those go. And I just forgot to grab a pattern, so hold on one second. I'm trying to collect all of my goodies and I forgot to grab that. Okay, so let's get started. First things, let's talk about swimsuit patterns. There are Thankfully, a lot of patterns that have come on to the market here recently. Um, Friday Pattern Company just released their Sea Bright swimsuit, I think. I will pop, it's an independent pattern company in uh, PDF, so I will pop a picture um, of these patterns up as I'm talking about them. But they've just released, it's a bodysuit and um, swimsuit pattern. And the pictures have a very plunging necklines. However, I was looking on Instagram at some of the tester versions, especially the people that made it as a bodysuit instead of a swimsuit. And I saw that there were varying degrees. Um, I think it's a wrap. Like you can wrap it more to not have quite the plunge. And I also saw that someone did a um, oh, little like um, fabric loops kind of and did almost like a nautical thing to where you can kind of close it a little bit. Anyway, it's very interesting to me, almost mostly because of the coverage of it. It has real thick, I mean, because it's meant to be worn as a bodysuit as well as a swimsuit, but real thick up through here. I think it would be great for sun coverage. She also even has it made up um, as a long-sleeved bathing suit, which I think if you have any issues with skin cancer, um, uh, or if you're pr pr prone to skin cancer, have had any issues with that type of thing, it would be genius. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Um, I think it's absolutely genius because, um, and I, I might make myself a rash guard this year because I do have very sensitive skin and I do worry about the effect that the sun has had. And I'm typically, I've mentioned before, a vampire when I'm at the pool <laughs> or at the beach or on a boat or wherever. If, wherever there's shade, that's where you'll find me, big hat, all that. But I've actually thought about maybe even making myself a rash guard. The only problem is, is that in order for me to wear a rash guard with a pair of bottoms, I would need a bikini top. Oh my gosh, one mil. A lot of interruptions today. <laughs> okay, so um, I am contemplating making myself a rash guard, um, but the problem is you have to wear, I mean, I have to wear a top underneath it. I can't just have a rash guard on because I need the support of a bra. Um, so I just, I've, I've always kind of worried about that being hot, but I don't know, it may not, it may not make a difference. I do like the idea though of the one piece with the sleeves. That could also be really hard to go to the bathroom. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I definitely like the sleeveless version. I like the coverage on it. Um, some oldies but goodies are, um, or another new one. Let's talk about the other new one um, real quick. And I'm sure there's others. Definitely mention them in the comments if I'm missing out on any. I'm definitely more prone to, um, well, I am, one pieces. 
<laughs> and things that have a little bit more coverage. Um, but there is the new Megan Nielsen swimsuit, the Cotslow. And I was actually a tester for that pattern. Um, unfortunately, when I was testing it almost a, over a year ago, uh, I just couldn't get it to fit right in the boobs, but she has made a ton of changes to the pattern since, so I'm very excited to try it out now that she's tweaked the fit um, on that. So I have that pattern, and I've made my daughter the high-waisted um, bottoms with the, it's almost like a sports bra type um, uh, bikini top or two-piece top. Um, sorry, dry eyes. And I'm very excited about trying that out for myself because the one piece does have a built-in like a sports bra in there. So um, it's just a great like base pattern, I think. Uh, you could do tons of different things with it. So that's the other new pattern. Okay, now, patterns, oldies but goodies, ones that I, um, you know, that are just real popular in the sewing community. Number one is the Cashmere Ipswich, Ipswich swimsuit. And I actually have that pattern, but unfortunately I've dropped out of the size range, so um, I'm not gonna be able to make that up. But if you are busty, it has a built-in, like, a serious, like, built-in bra. Um, I it's just gorgeous and it comes in a two-piece option and a one-piece option and it has a whole bunch of opportunities for color blocking or pattern mixing it's just it's a really beautiful one-piece swimsuit um, the other one that's very uh, popular one is the Sophie swimsuit by closet case and I have made that before um, I need to tweak that pattern just a wee bit for myself um, I made the I have a very short torso but I shortened it a little too much I still need that length in the front my cups were like I wore it all summer, and I've worn it for the past two years, I think, um, but for a future version, I think I'd be more comfortable if I just <laughs> lengthen the center front a little bit so that those could um, pop up a little. <laughs> um, but yes, that's definitely a crowd pleaser. And then I've also tried the Patterns for Pirates uh, plunge suit. Um, my I've made one version of that, and it did not fit me at all, but I also... I think I underlined too much of the suit with the power mesh, the shaping, the shapewear power mesh. Um, got a little carried away, you know. Oh, it can lift my butt and everything. And I think I just made it. It wasn't, I wasn't getting the vertical stretch out of it that um, I needed. So like the top was like stopping like down here. Uh, and I'm positive that's what it is. It's just that I sewed the whole thing. That's the problem with swimsuits. You almost have to sew, the, you can't really do a muslin. You almost have to sew the whole thing to check fit. Um, and I could get back in there, but the thought of undoing all that um, overlocking the surging, just, uh, yeah, no, I don't know. Um, anyway, and there were a couple of things on that suit finishing wise that I wasn't crazy about. I don't know how I would do it differently, really thinking, thinking about it more. Um, but I don't know. I have the pattern and I might try that one again and make it properly, <laughs> give it its, its rightful due. Okay, another one, let's see, I've got this Butterick pattern, which is B6358, and it's a Lisette, and I just think this is adorable. It's very reminiscent, um, well, kind of, of the Sophie swimsuit by Closet Case. It doesn't have the molded cups, though. I'm trying to see here. Although it does close like a bra on the back, even the, even the one piece does which I would make the one piece, but it does give you a lot of fun options for color blocking here, which I love. I would make the one piece, and I actually kind of thought possibly of doing a sew along on this. I've never made this pattern. Um, I don't know if you guys might be interested. I might have to do an FBA on it. I'm not sure. I probably, it has princess seams though. So anyway, um, I might, I might do a sew along on this if you guys are interested. Okay. So what else? Oh, there's also a gorgeous, and I can't remember which of the big four it is. It's either Butterick or McCall's, but there's a, I think it's a Connie Crawford. It's for uh, women's sizes of this gorgeous wrap style swimsuit that has some ruching and stuff. I'll pop a link to that down below. That's a gorgeous one too, uh, one piece that I've looked at before. Um, and I think that's it of ones that I'm mostly interested in. I, again, I know that there's more out there, but I don't wear bikinis. Um, I don't even really wear two pieces. Although, oh, Jay Lee. Jay Lee has a whole bunch of like athletic type swimsuits. And I actually, I have their sports suit that comes in a, like a two piece or a one piece because I made the two piece for my daughter. And I also have Jay Lee patterns also has a rash guard pattern that has, I don't know, like four different versions of rash guards. And I made my daughter the cropped long sleeved one last year and she loved it. Um, she needs a the rash guards. I also made the Tilling the Buttons Freya top um, as a rash guard for her um, last year and it worked great. She's got very pale skin and also needs the coverage um, from the sun. 
So I think that's it pattern wise. Again, if I'm missing anything obvious, pop it down below. Or if there's a one piece swimsuit pattern that you've used that you just really love, yeah, comment down below. I'd love to know about it because again, I'm rehauling my entire swimsuit drawer. And let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, five swimsuit five fabrics here. And that may seem a little excessive to some of you, but we have a pool in our neighborhood. It's our HOA, um, our Homeowners Association has a pool, and um, it's small, but we have a ton of kids in our neighborhood. And so my kids spend a lot of time down at the pool. They're 12, almost, they'll be 13 in September, um, but I'm not crazy about them being down there by themselves. Um, just because it can get crowded and I just worry, you know, crowded pools are never good. So I just prefer to be on site when they're there. So I spend a lot of time at the pool. Now they are old enough that I can literally sit there with my knitting or with a book or a magazine or whatever and uh, or even do work. I've taken my laptop down. There's a little sitting area with like picnic tables in the shade and um, I'll even work down there as well. But I do like to have a swimsuit on just because I mean, you're at the pool. So, um, and we have some friends that have a boat, so we're on their boat a lot in the summer, um, and we have some vacations coming up that, um, we're going up to Michigan, so we'll be on the water there. Um, so yes, I, I actually have need for <laughs> all these bathing suits, they get worn a lot. Okay, so let's talk fabric first, and then I'll get into notions. Alright, so these are the fabrics that I'm going to be using. Now, a majority of these came from Emma One Sock, and she doesn't always carry swimsuit fabric, but every now and again she does. And um, I think that it would probably be under the printed knits or solid knits tab um, on her site. But I got quite a few of these when she, um, at the end of the month, she'll usually do a 15% off sale that's 15% off all the sale categories. So anything that's been, you know, clearanced, yardage that's been clearanced, roll ins and usually her Linda's picks that she does. And um, I got maybe all of these on the roll-ins. One of them might have been a clearance, but you get an additional 15% off. And so I bought four of these during that sale um, because I just got excited and <laughs> she carries. That's the thing, with swimsuit fabrics, they're not all created equal. You can definitely get some that are thinner and um, really, really stretchy, like don't quite have the beef and heft to it. But if you, I find that if you go with especially um, independent fabric stores that you know sell quality things, a lot of times you can get, um, I mean, you're pretty self, you know, you're pretty assured that it's going to be high quality stuff. So my favorite places to shop for swimsuit fabric and what you need to look for. Nowadays, because sewing has had such a resurgence and because swimsuit sewing, there's patterns for both active wear and swimsuits. And a lot of times those fabrics can be interchanged. Now there's some activewear fabrics that might be um, maybe a little not, I mean like the wick away fabrics, like I wouldn't necessarily use that for a swimsuit. Um, you need to make sure it definitely has the stretch percentage that you need for the pattern. That's important. <laughs> and um, but definitely all swimsuit fabrics can be used for activewear. And typically what you're looking for are nylon lycra blends. Um, so yeah, these can be used for leggings, for sports bras, for like um, tighter fitting tops, um, that kind of thing for your active wear. And then obviously also swimsuits. They also, um, you can find woven swimsuit fabric as well. Um, fabric Fairy. I have bought stuff from her before and I've been very pleased with the quality of her stuff. Uh, she, she sells, has a whole tab that's just swimwear fabric and so all of that can be used. And then she even has a section of board short fabric. So that would be stuff that you would make a men's swimsuit out of, or even if you're making yourself a pair of like swim shorts. It's perfectly fine for the pool, and it's exactly what you would find in a store. So um, definitely, and I'll pop links to all these stores that I'm talking about down below. Again, I got um, this stuff from Emma One Sock, although I think she's a little bit more hit or miss with her swimsuit fabrics. Um, because there have been some swimsuit releases this year, Blackbird Fabrics has quite a nice selection of swimsuit fabrics. La Mercerie has a nice um, little selection. Those are both small fabric stores. I haven't checked Stone Mountain and Daughter, but I will. And if they've got a nice selection, I'll pop them down below. And of course, you can go to um, fabric.com or Mood. Although, again, with those bigger stores, I'm not, I'm a little more leery about the quality. You know, you may get something that's really nice or you may get something that's maybe a little flimsier. So I would, you know, you could try it. 
um, caution you on that, but you can definitely try it. Um, another store that's great for some really gorgeous swimwear fabric is the Fabric Store. I have, and this is what I'm going to be making one of my suits out of, this is a Liberty swimsuit fabric. And I have seen people make um, leggings out of the Liberty swimsuit fabric, and um, I'm going to make a swimsuit, obviously. But isn't this gorgeous? Look at those colors. And this has always kind of been destined to be the closet case Sophie. Um, so that's probably what I'll just end up doing with this one. I just love that pink. But it has enough bright color. Sometimes pink can look like a nude on me. <laughs> like it matches my skin tone a little too well. But I think I have enough going on in this fabric that I'm not going to have that issue. Um, and there's some of the brighter pinks and corals in there. So it won't look too much like skin toned for me. <laughs> but yes, I think I'm going to make, um, again, the Sophie. And I may pull out one of these colors and do some color blocking. I have quite a few solids um, that are just in my stash that I've picked up along the way that might be kind of cool for this one. But yeah, I think this is going to be the Sophie. And again, I got that from the, the fabric store. Okay, next is this lovely zigzag navy blue and white. I got this from Emma One Sock. If she still has any of this, I'll definitely link it. Um, but yes, I have a lot of this. I'm guessing this is a was a roll end because I have a lot, but it's a designer and isn't that wonderful? I don't mind having a lot of this because I could see, this is neutral enough, I could see me using this in different applications um, over the years. You know, um, it'd be great color block, you know, put this pattern in with maybe a solid or with another pattern um, or do something just a one piece. So I was kind of thinking for this one, Yeah, I think for this one, I'm kind of thinking maybe that Friday Pattern Company suit, because I really want to try it. And I have so much of this that if it doesn't work out, um, I've got a lot more to play with. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking of the that Seabright swimsuit. Um, and again, I'll do that, just the one-piece sleeveless version. All right, next is this Paisley, which is probably my least favorite out of the whole haul. Um, and I've made my daughter a Cotslow two-piece out of this, but I think I might make myself something out of this too. So again, I'm torn. I think, we'll see what I end up doing, but I am kind of tempted to make myself the Cotslow two-piece, the high-waisted bikini bottoms and the sports bra with a rash guard to go with it, but I don't know yet. That's kind of up in the air. So this one may or may not be a two-piece Cotslow, and we'll see if my daughter, um, will even let me have a swimsuit that's similar to hers. So this one, again, I've already made her something out of this, but there's plenty for me to make more. But isn't that pretty with the aqua and the coral? I want to show you. I just got a whole bunch of, um, I ordered a whole bunch of stuff off Wawac, and I get a lot of my sewing notions at Wawac. I'll pop a link down below. But I just got, I ordered four colors of thread that's going to go for all of these swimsuits. So I'm very, it, the color palette is amazing, and I'm very excited about summer now. <laughs> okay, so there's that one. Now, this one, I think I'm going to use for the Butterick, for the Butterick pattern. Look at this, isn't this fun? It's different shades of turquoise, but it's like a leopard print. But it also creates a stripe. Is that not cute? And I actually, I also really like these two together. So I don't know, I might even do these two together to make that swimsuit pattern, that Butterick swimsuit pattern. We'll see. I have quite a bit of this too. I have a feeling these, a lot of these are roll-ins because I normally only order a yard of fabric when I find a swimsuit fabric I like because that's plenty to do um, a swimsuit out of. And then here is my final one, which is this gorgeous print. And this is going to be a Cotslow because I want this print to, to sing. The, just the one piece, the low back that has the tie, um, because I think that's gorgeous. Isn't that pretty? And it's an uninterrupted pa pattern, so I'm very excited. Um, I think that's just going to be gorgeous. All right, so those are the fabrics that I'm going to be using for this little um, swimsuit haul. And I also want to talk about notions, and this is probably where a lot of people get a little um, nervous. But the first thing is swimsuit lining. So swimsuit lining is almost always a nylon lycra blend, and it's really thin, like you can see my hand through that. 
It usually comes in like this beige color, a white and a black, so depending on your skin tone and also on the color of suit that you're making um, will determine what color you want to maybe use for your swimsuit lining. But this is usually super, super stretchy and uh, again, very lightweight. So this is really just to help protect modesty more than anything else. But I use this on a majority of my swimsuits, so the whole back, um, unless I'm trying to be crafty like I was with my plunge swimsuit, so stupid. <laughs> Um, but the whole back, and usually, um, like for the Sophie swimsuit, it's got those side panels. I would use this for the side panels, but then for the front panel, and for anything around my boobs, so um, for the Cotslow, for instance, I will line the entire front of it with this, because this doesn't really suck anything in. But for the, so the bra, um, underneath it, they have a, like a built-in like sports bra. I will be using Power Mesh, which is a lot of times power mesh or shapewear mesh, um, that kind of thing. And it's much firmer. It doesn't have, it's also slinky and sliding off my lap. It doesn't have as much stretch as the other stuff. So it helps to suck you in and it is phenomenal. Um, but you can see it's very see-through and you can really see the holes. It looks like a mesh. Um, and this also comes usually in a beige, black, or white. Uh, I got this at Fabric Fairy, but I think I know that Blackbird has lining, just a regular lining. I don't know if they have any shapewear. And again, Stone Mountain Daughter. Again, I will link everything that I can find down below. There's going to be a lot in the description box. So if you have any questions, check there first. Um, but I think I got this at, I know Mood carries it as well. But I think I got this at Fabric Fairy, if I'm not mistaken. But shapewear, this is phenomenal. And again, I usually put that if there's just like a panel down the front. Um, which you could also do for the um, butter pattern that I just dropped on the floor. <laughs> um, but it will just hold things in. And again, if you're doing anything with the cups or if the top is a little bit separate, like the Take the Plunge suit, that's separate cups, that's fantastic to use that um, in, for that application because it'll give you a little more support. All right, notions. First off, I just want to say, when Cashmereette released their Ipswich suit and I bought it, she was doing these Notion kits, and she's just started doing them again for this year. I would highly recommend one of these because it comes with everything you need. So, I mean, like everything. So you've got basically, um, well, everything definitely for her, her suit, but you even have the bra wear stuff that goes along. So one of the things, if you have anything with a molded cup, which the Ipswich does, and so does the Sophie swimsuit, this is uh, bra foam. And it's literally foam. <laughs> you can kind of see. Um, I, you can also get this at uh, Bra Maker Supply in Canada or Sweet Cup Supply, which is it's the same company, I believe. It's just one operates out of Canada and one operates out of the U.S. Um, but I think it's all in the same kind of conglomerate. Uh, but this is great for making your own swimsuit cups. So even, um, I think, the, the Friday Pattern Company, the Seabright Suit, offers the option for, um, you can put cups into your suit, as does the plunge, take the plunge, the Patterns for Pirate plunge swimsuit. You can put um, swim cups. I don't like the molded swim cups that you can just buy. I find um, even the ones that are softer, it's just really hard to find one that fits your boob just right. So I found that, um, especially with the Sophie swimsuit, because you're making your own and it fits my boob just perfectly, that I can just make my own swim cups. And it's very easy to do. There's also, while I'm thinking about this, um, Cashmereette and Closet Case Patterns both have swimsuit making courses on their site that you can buy where they s completely walk you through sewing their respective swimsuit patterns. So if you're really scared, that would be fantastic. Also, Beverly Johnson has a wonderful swimsuit class on Blueprint that I've taken before. It's very informative on how to, to sew your own swimsuit. So this kit includes that, it includes some shapewear, uh, the power mesh, it includes underwire, sorry, crinkly plastic, underwires um, in a couple of different sizes. Uh, underwires can be tricky to buy, um, but again, bra maker supply, sweet cup supply, you can also buy underwires um, there, and some lingerie shops on Etsy as well. But um, I think these were meant to actually fit into the Ip Switch. So that's good for the Sophie and the Ipswich where you actually have an underwire. Um, she also has in here boning. 
So this is actually covered boning. So for the Ipswich, you can put boning in the side seams to help with support because you're basically building in a bra. And she has lingerie elastic here, again, because you're basically building a bra into the swimsuit. And she also has these really nice, if you can see that, these clear clasps, um, swimsuit clasps. I'll see if they have anything like that on Wawak too, though. Um, take a look down below. And I'm not sure that Wawak ships internationally or not. I'll, I'll check, I have to check that out too. But it also contains swimsuit elastic. So I have actually never seen this anywhere but this kit. It's like rubber. It's really thin. Um, but I've never seen swimsuit elastic like this. And I'm not sure, again, mine came in the kit, um, and I'm sure it's specifically swimwear elastic. But what I've gotten, and that is one thing, you definitely want to use stuff that says swimwear elastic. If you're going to be using your pool or your swimsuit a lot in the ocean or um, the pool. So chlorine and salt water can break down elastic. If you're like me and sitting at the pool, regular elastic is really fine. Just know that if you're going to be in the pool a lot or in the ocean and you use regular elastic, it probably will break down quicker than actual swimwear elastic. So you have this rubber kind. And I'll see if I can't source maybe some place that has that. Or also from Wallwack. Clear elastic works the same. So I've got quarter inch clear elastic and it's just, it's like plastic. And then the half inch for, um, for the swimsuits that I want, the Cotslow actually, more specifically. <laughs> but this is swimwear elastic. This is clear swimwear elastic. So it's meant for the chlorine and for salt water. Holds up just a little bit better. Um, another thing that you may or may not need, and Bra Maker Supply, again, or any really lingerie place online, will sell bra sliders. Can you see that? Which you may or may not, if you want to make your straps adjustable, bra sliders come in super handy. Again, check your notions on your pattern, um, but I'll pop links to where you can get all that below. Um, and let me see here. I think that's everything in my kit. Yeah, because the rest of this stuff's lingerie elastic. Another option for finishing off your suits is um, fold-over elastic. Now again, oops, I'm just going to dump all that out. This may or may not be rated for um, pools, so it could degrade over time, but it's just so cool. So fold-over elastic is wide strips of elastic that are plush on one side, shiny on the other, and they have like, let me come closer, let me come close. They've got, um, there we go, a seam right there to fold. And so a lot of times this is used in underwear making and that kind of thing. And I've honestly just gotten uh, figured out how to sew this on without making it all wavy. But this is a great option for finishing off your legs, armholes, and neck bands. So, and you can use either the shiny side or the plush side depending on your own preference. Um, so either side could be right side or wrong side. Um, what was I going to say about that? Oh, <laughs> if you're going to use that though and the pattern does not call for it, remember that you'll need to trim the seam allowance off because this works as binding. So it just literally lops on. Or you could not chop the seam allowances off and just know that your straps will be a little thicker and you know your neckline will be just a little bit higher. Most swimsuits have a quarter to three eighths of an inch seam allowance so it's not um, a lot but that is something to consider. Okay, I think that's it for swimsuit sewing. Oh, needles. Um, I get questions about needles a lot. So for most swimsuits, my favorite needle, and again, I'll pop a link down below, are the Schmetz stretch needles. And for most swimwear fabric, I can get away with a size 11, um, and that's what I use. I don't think you really need anything any thicker or lighter, um, but I do like the stretch I mean, it's a ballpoint needle, but the stretch needle seems to work better with swimsuit fabric as opposed to just a regular ballpoint needle. Um, although, I mean, use what you've got and definitely test because that's going to be the real kicker. Um, you're going to want to, you can definitely sew all of this with a serger, which I do most of my seams, I mean all of my seams with a four thread serger. And then I will do um, my um, 
elastic application and you know my top stitching with a three part zigzag and I always set that to a width of four and a length of three and it also helps with fold over elastic it won't um, ripple on you um, but yeah I think that's pretty much it a walking foot if you're using a regular home machine all these can be sewn on a regular home machine you just want to use a stretch stitch which is like a little teeny zigzag stitch when you're doing your seams you don't have to use a serger to finish off your seams um, so yeah definitely can be done on a home machine I would recommend a walking foot because not only are these stretchy fabrics but a lot of the times they're um, slippery so you can get shifting if you're not careful so having a walking foot that will feed them through the top and the bottom through evenly um, is very very helpful and most machines have a walking foot option you may have to call your dealer to get one um, or even find a generic one that fits your machine but I would definitely really a walking foot is a I find pretty invaluable for a home machine even when I'm sewing a lot of knits um, and even slinky fabric I use a walking foot a lot okay I think that's it <laughs> so again if you guys are interested I could maybe uh, muddle through a sew along with um, again I've not made that butterick pattern yet but I could definitely um, tackle it with you guys if that was something of interest so yeah leave a comment down below if that sounds interesting um, let's see next week we've got um, my module three and I don't know that I'm gonna do a makes video I may just do here's module three because as of right now, I have nothing new to make for it. It's all stuff that I've pulled. One thing is a ready to wear item that's been in my closet for since college <laughs> for a long time. Um, but everything else is me made, just me made previously. Um, I think. I'm still playing around. I have everything hanging on my rack right now so I can kind of look at it and make any edits. And I may edit one thing out and make something. So we'll see. It may just be a lookbook for module three. Um, so you guys can see the full capsule um, and then after me made may is over i'll do a, a look of all three modules together not all the outfit combinations because i think three modules which would be 18 pieces is something you can make like 216 outfits out of i'm not going to change my clothes that many times <laughs> so anyway but i could do definitely a lot of um show you a lot of what an 18 piece capsule could do so anyway, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so that you don't miss out on any of the fun stuff we've got planned. Um, also in June, we're going to be going through how I plan a module. I mean, all the way from picking silhouettes to then fabric to the color story um, to then patterns, uh, the whole nine yards. I'm starting with a summer cap module series that I'm going to do. And so I'll be taking you along with me as I start from scratch and creating a new module or a new module, a couple of modules. <laughs> So that's all I have for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you on Tuesday. Bye!